Fora TV. The world is thinking. You support a fair tax or a national retail sales tax. Can right. you explain that and why you support it? Well, I'm convinced, Skip, that the current tax system that we have is irreparably broken, that it's counterintuitive to a healthy economy. And here's why. It penalizes productivity. Uh, if you penalize productivity, you're working against the capacity of your economy to function and to function effectively. You ought to encourage work, savings, investment. You ought to encourage all those things that create jobs and put money into people's hands so that they can be personally empowered by prosperity. And it needs to be done in the way so that there is a distribution of the burden that somehow makes sense. You don't want to have some people paying a disproportionate amount, whether they're at the bottom or at the top, because what that does, it either spurs people to be resentful or it spurs them to try to cheat and get around it. Several years ago, there was a group of business people who commissioned some of the leading economists in the country, and they came from Stanford, from Boston University, from Harvard, uh, from MIT, and the challenge was get, get in a room and design the ideal system of, of, of a tax structure. Come up with what, if you had a blank sheet of paper and could do anything you wanted to do, what would it look like? Well, everyone thought that they would come back with a basic flat tax proposal because in many emerging economies, Estonia, Hong Kong, and other places where a flat tax has been implemented, there has been extraordinary economic growth because there is an equal distribution in a flat tax. Well, what they came back with was a tax that was, in fact, flat, but it also was based not on production but on consumption. And every economist said, you know, in a perfect world, you wouldn't tax people for their production. You would tax them at the point of consumption. And then they had a provision in the fair tax, which is that you eliminate all of the taxes on productivity, corporate and individual income tax, taxes on savings, dividends, capital gains, and inheritance. You wouldn't have payroll taxes or any deductions. When you worked, you would get your entire paycheck, nothing taken out. Because you have no corporate tax, the current tax that is now hidden into the things we buy would disappear. This table, if this were made in the United States, the table in front of us, for the radio audience who wonders, what table are you talking about? <laughs> the one that I'm describing on radio. <laughs> this table, if produced in the United States, uh, would have an embedded tax of about 22%. So the cost has added on to it corporate tax and the cost of compliance, which, by the way, in the United States is about 250 to $500 billion every year. Now, that's what we pay just to comply with the tax code. That's not money that's producing anything. That's not money that is marketing anything, that's researching anything, that's helping an employee with benefits or salaries. $250 billion to $500 billion complying with the paperwork of your government. That's all it does so that we can stack paper in a warehouse. Add to that, when you build in that tax, the customer never even sees it. It's an invisible tax, but that's a 22% embedded cost you go to purchase this table with a paycheck, about half of which is gone before you ever get it because of all the deductions that the government gets before you get your hands on it. So our economy has now been put in a position where um, we're operating with penalties on the productivity. Under the fair tax, there is no embedded tax, and you go to purchase this with your full paycheck. The tax levied would be at the point of retail consumption and the reason that it has a much more healthy dynamic is because you also end the underground economy. Today, if you work under the table, you're not paying taxes. If you're a drug dealer, a prostitute, a pimp, a gambler, or an illegal that works in cash, you don't pay taxes in the same way that the rest of us do. So out here today in the crowd, and I'm assuming you're probably legal taxpayers, if not, don't lift your hand. There are cameras, and the IRS will come to get you. But if you're a legal taxpayer, you're not just paying your taxes. You're paying yours, and you're paying for all the people who operate underground and don't pay a dime in the taxes you pay. So what the fair tax does, it says, you know, you buy something, then that's when the tax is assessed. And what has happened, we have chased, think about this, $12 trillion offshore. That's U.S. money that is not working in our system. It's now parked offshore in offshore bank accounts 
It's helping Europe, it's helping Asia, it's making uh, the Cayman Islands a wonderful banking center. But what would happen if $12 trillion of American capital were in our economy working here? It would make a dramatic difference. We wouldn't be in a recession. And we wouldn't be worried about how are we going to bring back the 3 million manufacturing jobs that we've lost. The Made in America brand would come back not because of tariffs and because of protectionism. It would come back because of productivity, which is how the economy is supposed to operate. So the beautiful thing about the fair tax is that it gets rid of the IRS. And I would get to be the president who would get to nail the going out of business sign on the front door of the IRS. And, um, April, April 15th would become just another beautiful spring day in America. Governor, uh, some would say that perhaps the fair tax might not cover everything. So would there be some taxes that you would retain or would you just ratchet up the percentage on the fair tax to cover all of those taxes are no longer collected. Well, the fair tax model is designed so that it would essentially replace the money that we currently get in our myriad of 66,000 pages of tax code. So it really is a much simpler uh, approach. The way to really make it effective is to repeal the 16th Amendment that authorized the income tax so that there's no danger of the government coming back with both, although quite frankly, can you imagine a Congress being so stupid that they would try to impose another income tax after we had the fair tax? Uh, that They would all be end of termers if that were to happen. <laughs> but to just prevent it from happening, because sometimes we've seen a Congress who's just about that irrational, uh, that would be another uh, way to, to guarantee it. Um, one of the, the, the things that I often hear, Skip, is that, well, do you think that'll actually pass? Congress isn't going to do that. Look, Congress may not like it, but here's what can happen. When enough Americans say to their congressmen, either give us the fair tax or we'll fire you and hire somebody who will. They will get the message. And, and I also, I just don't accept, because the other night in one of the debates, uh, Tim Russert from NBC tried to challenge me on this idea that, well, that'll never happen, so why are you even talking about it? I refuse to believe that the best ideas are, are the ones that'll never happen. The question is not, do you think it's practical to get it passed? No, let's ask the most important question. Is this a superior approach to, to the tax structure in this country than the one we have? Let's ask that yes or no, and if it's yes, then please don't tell me that this country is incapable of doing the best, that we have to accept the worst. And, and if that's where we are, then that's why I believe I need to be president, because I refuse to accept the worst alternative when a best one is on the table. And I would work to pass the best one rather than just to resign myself to the worst one. 